often I see teams play with, when, when they, they just cross balls without real emphasis. All right. And, and this is another Barcelona uh, concept. Barcelona said that uh, balls that were crossed from wide positions and lofted in the box, they called those counter crosses because the goalkeeper, the, the goalkeeper would come out and players are bigger no, normally than the strikers and normally they outnumber the amount of attacking players in the box that they would win a ball, they would clear it out 20 yards, the opposing team would pick up the ball and they would be in, in uh, transition the other way. So we really talk a lot about avoiding counter crosses because it defeats our counter pre- our counter pressing. It defeats uh, you know a lot of our little um, um, attacking ideas. So we have a stinger cross, and that is basically the ball to first post flat early. Okay, and then we need runners in the box. So the first runner. So even here, first. First cross, maybe that he plays, he plays flat and he's playing behind, and we have attackers that are trying to run behind the back, back line. We don't want that ball playing long. Or we're usually faster, but not bigger than they are. So even though it doesn't come through, then it also initiates counter pressing for us. So here we have a counter pressing moment where we win the ball right back, and you see that we don't have players in wide positions. We're all compressed. We have good rest. Rest defense, we're playing vertical again, a combination, and he's in the hatch four, okay? He's in this space, and his job is to play the ball directly across, and this shows that the ball is coming there. And it winds up being an own goal, right? We score. The thing of 2017, I believe, our first six goals, four of them were own goals from the opponent. And I had a, a question in the media, and they said to me, um, you know, you've been lucky to own, you know, do you think that it's going to keep going that way? And I didn't say to them, well, our tactic is to force the opponent to have to always play, you know, defend backwards. But I just said, yeah, we've been lucky. You know, hopefully that luck will continue. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a tactic, right? And it puts the defenders would much rather play with them and be able to head balls, but this puts them in positions to have to deal with space behind. Here's a Champions League game. This was in Genk for us this year in Salzburg. Okay. So here again, you see our back line all attacking. We're not worrying about the players over here. The center back, the right center back steps in, plays the first ball forward. We are immediately ready to go into uh, transition the other way. We play in behind. Now, what I want you to see here is, is watch the movement of this striker. Okay? Fantastic. So both the strikers know, okay, so that's Erling Holland and Hee-Chan Wong. You've probably heard of Erling Holland. But both of them know that in this moment, the, the, the goal right now is to score near post. Right, we're very clear with that. When we get into transition moments, that we need good movements. So, Erling Holland knows that Hechan is is going to most likely set up to get himself to the near post. Hechan sets up the defender. The ball comes there before Chan's even there, and it's an easy. We call those easy goals. We want to score. Our goal is to score eighty percent of goals of our run of play goals like that. We call them easy goals, tap ins, right? Really good movement. So, yeah, I mean, just so that think, think carefully about what kinds of, of crosses that you're, you're, you want your team to try to execute. Because, again, I, I think that there's too many teams that, that they just tell, talk about whipping the ball in or putting balls in the box, and there aren't really good ideas about how to actually put, put the opponent into difficult situations. Hallo, ich möchte euch noch schnell erklären, warum Jesse Marsch seine Spieler auffordert, die Konter meist auf den ersten Pfosten zu spielen. Denn er hat meiner Meinung nach nicht den wahren Grund erwähnt, nämlich das, das ballorientierte Pressing, das Ralf Rangnick und die Red Bull Teams populär gemacht haben. Denn bei diesem Konter von Genk sie, sieht man die, die Ballorientierung der Österreicher mit zwei Spielern auf, auf dem Ballträger und zwei Spielern, 
die den Raum hinter ihnen schließen werden. Eigentlich hat sich aber fast die gesamte Mannschaft auf der linken Seite positioniert und so ist es kein Zufall, dass die Spieler von Jesse Marsch einen Gegenangriff genau durch diese linke Seite starten werden. Jetzt kommt. Auch hier sind die Österreicher noch vor allem auf der linken Seite positioniert, so, so dass ein, eine Flanke auf den zweiten Pfosten nicht wirklich Sinn machen würde. Denn zusätzlich dazu dann, also dem, dem Verteidiger mehr Zeit äh, zu, gehen, zu geben, um zu reagieren und noch dem Torwart die Möglichkeit zu geben, den, den Ball abzufangen, wäre Genk auch im Vorteil, wenn der Ball nicht berührt würde, da Salzburg aufgrund seines ballorientierten Pressings keinen Spieler auf der re rechten Seite hat. Indem sie, also indem sie auf den ersten Pfosten spielen, stellen also die Österreicher sicher, dass sie in jedem Fall gefährlich sein können, selbst bei einem Ballverlust, da, da, die, Mitf da die Mittelfeldspieler auch direkt äh, zum Gegenpressen kommen könnten. Und jetzt noch das Tor. So, das war's schon von, von mir. Zögere nicht, meinen Kanal zu abonnieren, um sicher zu, zu stellen, dass du keine ähnlichen Inhalte verpasst. Und wenn dir das Video gefallen hat, äh, vergiss nicht, mir ein Like zu geben, es mir in den Kommentaren mitzuteilen und das Video mit einem weiteren Fußball-Nerd zu teilen. Das würde mir wirklich helfen. Mehr als du glaubst. Ciao.